much for having me. It's a pleasure. Good it's to meet you. Good to meet you. So, tell me about Dragon's Den, this experience. I believe you've been filming uh, with the guys. Yeah. Um, what's that like for you? What's that like for you? Um, it's been a, a massive experience. So, we've finished filming now. Um, it took three to four weeks to do it. So, you know, it, it's a big thing. I, mean, I didn't realise how big it was, actually, until you get involved in it. Mm. You know, but the, these things come up in life. I want to do if you say no. So I thought, you know, let's just go for it. Um, it's been a great experience. And it's great to be able to get to face entrepreneurs again mm. and I've made some investments. Oh, really? Can, can you great. tell us how many investments you made roughly? Without um, giving too much away because I understand it. Yeah, well, I've made probably about four or so. Oh, yeah. But now we're going through due diligence. So, you know, we need to make sure that um, <laughs> they are what they say they are. Yeah. So there's a, it's in the program, you commitment obviously to invest. Sure. And a lot of it is really the people to us with you. Mm. And then you have to go through a process. What, what qualities do you think are most important when someone's pitching you an idea? Um, so the, the ones that I tended to go for have, I said, that they're more of a business that they've established that it might be small, but they've established it, they've proven it, they're selling the product, there's a market for it, and I can see this growth potential. They haven't so much yet been, I've invented this, can you get it in being cute? <laughs> you know, yeah. you so there's been a few of those, one little bit like that, but the main thing sort of, and it, it's obviously it's the people in this case. Mm. It's the, People see a lot of people walk out, and if you like the business and the market and the model, what they're doing, they really is down to you think you can work with them. Mm. Hey, that's very important. If you can't work with them, then it's no point. Mm. And how did you get involved with Dragons then? Who approached who? Um, they approached me, so I think uh, I did the Super Millionaire program, you yeah. know, so I did that, and then I haven't, I haven't really been anywhere near TV since then, really. And mm. they approached me, and I think uh, as you know, a couple of the Dragons sort of left the program. It became a space. Yeah. And I think it was important for me, I think, for the producers to mix it up a bit. Quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was actually, um, yeah. it was time to make it change. If you saw the program, the last series, or one, say, four years ago, mm. you know, on, on TV, you probably couldn't see, tell the difference. Whereas I think what they've done this time is um, they've refreshed the format. So themselves, Kelly, um, the new sort of way of doing things with them. Uh, it's changed a little bit since So I think people, it'll be a refreshed, more interesting program. And how would you describe your fellow dragons? You've got Duncan Ballantyne, and uh, Peter Jones, and Deborah so Meaden as well. How, how are they like? So we, all, we all got on very, very well. So, for, yeah. so for me, very so diplomatic. Well, for, for yeah, me, yeah. turning up, mm. it's quite well in program. We're yeah. quite well known people. I didn't know any of them personally before. That. Yeah. So you pitch them, it's quite big shoes. And, uh, and uh, because, maybe because Kelly was new as well, there's two mm. of us. I that helped. Yeah. But I think we all got on, and you know, you know, the, the personas, they're edited in a way to bring out personas, I'm sure. Yeah. And you know, you meet someone like Deborah, she's the nicest lady you would ever want to meet, quite mm. frankly. And you just get to know these people very well. But you do spend a lot of time with them, you know, you spend like four weeks together, yeah. day and night working together. It's quite intense. Yeah. So you do build relationships. Great. And you, are you still uh, in contact with them now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I made a, hopefully it all goes through an investment with her. Uh, one of the other dragons. Uh, you started your own business when you were 13 years old. What, what were you doing at 13? So I, uh, it's funny, I never thought of the business until recently. <laughs> People yeah. asked me about it. So I used to um, <coughs> get up in the morning, five days a week, I think it was six days a week, grooming my, uh, this is Lancashire, so it was really freezing, I used to drink. So I get up in the morning, six days a week, did it in a newspaper as a local news agent. Okay. I got paid a fiver, yeah. I wasn't late. I thought this is a career, I've got to do something else. So. I don't know where the idea came from, but I basically did a this with flyers around the area, and I realised my dad hated picking up his Sunday papers. So he had to get out of bed, go and get them, come back, then we could read them. So I did some flyers, and I built up a, a, a sort of paper round of people mm -hmm. who wanted their Sunday papers delivered. And I did sort of this big round on Sunday mornings, and I earned four times as much just on Sunday morning what I earned for a whole week. Nice. And then about three years later, I became I became a bit old to the paper round. Mm -hmm. I sold the business. <laughs> oh, well, to me, it was one of money those days. Yeah. But it was my first disposal to look at that. So you effectively sold your class onto Yeah, I yeah. sold it all round to the next, per next okay. person. Right. Well, you seem to take keen interest in young people and the giving back to society, not yeah. just necessarily the people you personally know, but the strangers, for example. Uh, you've worked with uh, Reach, you were a role yeah, model. Yeah, role model. So tell me about that and how being a role model is. So these things grow down there. So <coughs> I was uh, approached to become a role model in 2008 it was, yep. uh, um, it's basically to raise aspirations of young black men and young black boys, that's what we're going to stop, because there was such an issue 
So I did that for two years. And we went to schools and events and colleges and spoke to young people. And we were all from different backgrounds. So there was people who worked for the government, there were people who were in the armed forces, there was a fireman, there was a guy on TV doing the weather. We all mix of people, just so they could just see, okay, there are role models and people I could aspire to be, mm-hmm. um, rather than maybe some people that I shouldn't be aspiring to be. So that was a great experience. So I did that, and then I think through that, I ended up being recognised on the power list. Mm-hmm. And then through that, you get recognised as a super millionaire, and then from that, maybe Dragon Fest. They're all good stepping stones in a way, but I've always, always tried to put back. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, one of the other things about making money is you do that. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So again, a means to an end of giving back and yeah. being maybe. I probably, I probably given away more money in a few years than I've invested. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. What are your thoughts on the current uh, economic climate, uh, particularly of uh, young black male unemployment that uh, recently has been in the you news? Can be the <laughs> well, 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 briefly, and where, where do you stand on the issue where the government's cutting in certain places and how? Very tricky. We've got yeah. ma- the macro issues, of course, yeah. and there's micro issues, and mm-hmm. even. Let, let me be more specific with my question then. Yeah. How do you see the role of the private investor in society and where, where you can help? Where, where can you best help? In Very hard to work. When I made a super millionaire, what's more interesting is that I was in a young defendant institution. Yeah. Now, in my, in my daily life, it's very rare with to really uh, see anyone that looks like me. So, and, and by me, I mean specifically someone sort of, I say, West Indian heritage, mm-hmm. maybe the African, I've worked lots of you know, sort of wealthy Africans in the city and various other places. West Indian heritage is very rare. I, I walk in a young offenders institution and everyone looks like me. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, right, okay. Yeah. And I, I, what, what, what I learned from that actually is that you, know, you look at the issues there and how you want to help people, this is very specific, and you realise that you could throw a billion dollars out there, pounds, and it would bounce off. So there's, there's things like that where you think, how do you need systemic change from the top down? Very difficult for you know one person mm. to make that kind of difference. I mean, there's people like you know the giving place, the billionaires who like Bill Gates and Buffett and that lot, and you know, even Richard Branson actually, who committed to give away a lot of their fortune. Even there, they can struggle to make real impact. Mm. So the question it boils down to is, at the end of the day, you can do what you can do, and I think if everybody did what they could do, did their bit, the advocating for making a change, but you can't. It's very hard for you to make changes. I mean, I've got ideas, charities I want to start, but once I get the business the, 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 you know, floating on the stock market, get that out of the way, the charities I want to start, which are actually more about providing young people with access to experience in business or companies. So typically it's about placements, internships, and it's a pain. And they tend to be a way of pre-interviewing for the job you might get in the future. So, for example, if you want to invest in an investment bank, you're an investment bank, and you come from a certain social economic background, you probably never get into that internship. And my idea really is to give kids experience with teenagers, but it's blind to their social economic and ethnic background. And their postcodes, where they're yeah. postcodes. Yeah. They're just blind. Yeah. You, if I had seen what a law firm looks like, or a trading floor, or a bank, or a private equity house when I was 16, I might have shortcut my career.